Super Bowl 40 one more time. Hey, it's the coach. This is week two of the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, Nomad Hasselback. But the Seattle Seahawks are out for revenge as they once again take on Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'll talk to you again at halftime with a look around the league. But now, let's say hello to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, and Heinz Field. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, we look at this Steeler ball club entering play. The loser's their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Seahawks, they were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. The children will grow, and it's the final weekend of summer, but we've got the NFL, and we're underway on EA Sports. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Steelers make their way out. The killer bees are no more. Only one remains, and that's their quarterback, number seven, Ben Roethlisberger. This is a guy who made a Pro Bowl in his second season, James Conner. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. And a peek now at the offense for Pittsburgh. In the center for Pittsburgh, Marquise Pouncey, one of the most physical and agile players at his position in the league. A seven-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro. He's a keystone of one of the top offensive lines in the league. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the, in the league, a seven-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro. He's a keystone of one of the top offensive lines in the league. Ready? Officially Black nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the, in the league, a seven-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro. He's a keystone of one of the top offensive lines in the league. Ready? Officially Black nothing boys. on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. And he finds McDonald. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big 30-yard play on third. All right, Charles, let me put you in the head of one of those defenders out there. You have a big play like that go against you so early. What Does that shake your confidence? It shouldn't, but it often does because your thought process all during the week is how you're going to get after that offense and make your plays. And when they make one against you, it makes you a little bit hesitant. Time to regroup. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. 
A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away in second down. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm past the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Here's Roethlisberger. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 30. Brandon, unless my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, yeah. that's the second time they've gone to him here on this drive. Yeah, opening drive. It's a tone setter, right? I think they're going to be looking his way a lot. Yeah, and I think that the way things are going right now, they like him as a featured receiver. Let's see what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make to try and take that away. So first and 10 now from the 30. This is counter. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because when they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 18. He's at the 40. The 20. 10. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last, that didn't bother you too much last time. No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play too. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave them with a second and three. Here we go, here we go. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. First carry of the game for Jalen Samuels. And he's going to be stopped short of a first down as he'll get to him at about the 33. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. 
Fourth and short, partner. I mean, this would be a really risky call. Here we are in the first quarter. On They're your own side of the own field. On side of the field. But boy, what a tone setter that would be to go for it and get it, wouldn't it? You're gritty today. I like I'm, it. I'm feeling it. On fourth down, here comes a Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Back deep for the Seahawks, Tyler Lockett. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Here's the second-year man from San Diego State, Rashad Penny. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. So I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. Now Wilson, down around his goal line. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. Right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up, back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. And he'll be brought down shy of the first down marker at the 11. It'll be a gain of seven, but I'd imagine we'll see the punt team here on fourth down. Well, just like you said, they've got the lead, don't do anything silly, run the football, and that's what they did. They would have liked to have created a little more room for their punter. But he'll take what they gave him, and he'll go out there now and try and get the ball off and help his defense. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. Back deep, Ryan Switzer. Taken from just outside the 30. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. And now out come the Steelers. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. So good field position for the Steelers as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. They start the drive with Connor. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. to Cotter here on first. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. 
On second and 11 now. Roethlisberger. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. And that is incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now. As he'll punt it away for the second time. Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at the 20. Wilson defers to Penny here on the draw. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. A gain of three, second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now second and seven from the 23. They go play action now, Wilson. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. Throwing is Wilson. Looking for Garcon, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the rookie first-rounder from Michigan, Devin Bush. And a return will stop right around the 25. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. The Steelers offense now, they head back onto the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. On first down, Connor. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now Roethlisberger to throw. Now he's got it. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now you can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. They come out here in the eye. Stop your whining. They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. Only a yard that time. Second and goal. It's a gain of a yard. Look. They come out here in the eye. Stop your whining. 
They'll try to run it. This is Connor. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. Only a yard that time. Second and goal. Look. And goal. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on I it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. Okay, so you just took the big loss. Now what are you doing on fourth down? Well, we have a change of plans now is what we have because... I think they were looking at the play sheet, trying to dial something up to go for it on fourth down. But after that loss, that goes right out the window. Now you have to kick the field goal and hope to come back down the next time and score. Boswell's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. Boswell signed to a four-year deal prior to last season, but he struggled a little bit. Yeah, do you think that they saw 13 of 20 when they signed him to a four-year deal? Not at all. Needs a big bounce back in 2019 if he wants to see the end of that contract. Yeah, for the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. He'll look to shake off the interception on the opening drive. He should at least be comforted that it resulted in three, not six. And if I were him, I would be the guy all the way out on the field greeting my defense now saying, thanks a lot. He held him to a field goal after I turned it over. That's a big defensive stand for them. He needs to go out now and make up for what he did on the first drive. They'll run with Penny, and he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Well, they have the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. From the shotgun, Wilson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Hayward attacking off the edge that time. It's a lot of discussion in the offseason about him having a big year and getting to the quarterback. They held him without a sack in week one, but how about here? Finally gets his first one of the season. In the offseason, said he changed his diet leaner. Feels so good this year. Excited to see what type of a season he can have. Wilson and the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Play action. Now Wilson. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Now here's Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here's Switzer. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and ten. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> Toe bash. I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> Super tough. 
It's counter as they stay on the ground. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Michael Kendricks, the linebacker, there to get him down. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. From the 41, Roethlisberger. He'll rifle this one deep right side. No, oh, he almost had it. Already with one interception, just missing his second there. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Roethlisberger will throw. This is Johnson. He's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. They'll run on first down. It's Connor. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Second and 12, Roethlisberger. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Boy, the numbers throwing the football, just not trending in the right direction. Last week he was under 50%. He's under 50% again here. And we haven't gotten an announcement, but it appears to me that he might be a little dinged up and is just trying to play through. You know, he's one of those tough guys that wants to answer the bell each and every play for his team. That might be throwing off his accuracy. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 29-yard line. You know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son, and then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? <laughs> but you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receiver's eyes when he's throwing the ball. Roethlisberger now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. We got four. We got four. Now Roethlisberger. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 at a first down. This one will wind up with him losing yardage back to the four-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Back. 
From back at the four, here's second and goal. Here's Roethlisberger. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. One thing that I liked about this guy during the draft process was his motor. Of course, I loved his skills, but he plays hard on every down. And that motor on full display there as he gets his first NFL sack. They need to reverse the trend. The last two plays have gone backwards. Now it's third and goal. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. Another good drive, Charles, but it looks like another that might end in a field goal try. They've made some nice plays. They've given themselves opportunities, but as you noted, another field goal attempt coming up. And that's not how they want to end drives. They've got to figure out what's the final touch that they need to push it across the goal line. Yeah, still yet to find the end zone. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Boswell's kick is good. And they'll get it back with it a point at seven to six. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that? On. Well, what does that mean, break out the, just because bre you break chestnuts? I I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Yeah, for the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Second and six, just inside the 30. After one, a one-point game, seven to six. From the 29, Wilson. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Wilson turns and gives to Procise. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Let's go, D. Big series right here. We got to step it up. From the 44, Wilson. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked off by the rookie first rounder from Michigan, Devin Bush. And he's in for six and a Steeler touchdown. 
make it back-to-back -back weeks now with a pick six for him. He had one a week ago. Talk about being in the groove, and what are the odds of what we're seeing right here? You don't see it happen very often. Listen, if you get a pick six in a season, it's been a big year, let alone back-to-back -back weeks. I'll tell you this, I wouldn't play cards against this guy in the <laughs> locker room. for the extra point. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here's Russell Wilson in the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. Bottom line, he's got to figure things out. He's completed three passes, but two of them have been to the wrong team so far. And when we talk about the best quarterbacks, we're usually talking about touchdown to interception ratio, aren't we? And two to one is acceptable, but the top line guys, three to one or better is what they're looking for. Now we're talking about interceptions versus completions. That's not a ratio should ever be in any discussion. They'll start on the ground. It's Rashad Penny. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. From the gun, it's Wilson. He'll find Metcalf. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Give him four yards as he does it himself, and it's a first down. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Wilson going to hand it to Prosez. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Second and five now. Wilson. That's into the hands of his tight end, Will Disley. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 40. 
When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Steeler territory now. Here's first and ten, right at the 40. Wilson leaves this one with Penny. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Throwing on second and three. Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 21. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. A first down carry. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. Second and very short. Wilson, it's caught. Lock it. Wilson to lock it there for the Seahawks first down. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row. I'm going to stay confident, keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. This is Procise, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Call it a loss of two on the play, and it'll be second and goal. I think Cameron Hayward's ability to take on blocks, hold the point of attack, and get upfield serves him very, very well. What a nice play there. Yeah, he can take on blocks because he's built like a block. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. Now Wilson. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. DK Metcalf, his second touchdown on the season. And now they can recapture the lead if they can make the PAT. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. They all have those types of thoughts. And then they just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him. Myers connects on the PAT, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. I think every... The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
A reminder coming up later tonight, Sunday night football, a good one from Atlanta. Eagles and Falcons, 820 Eastern. And then tomorrow on Monday night football, Odell Beckham back in New York, back in MetLife Stadium. Browns and Jets, 815 Eastern on Monday night. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They start with a give to Connor. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. They have the ball to strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. From the 30 on second down, Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. Seven yards there and a first down. Roethlisberger now, 8 of 17 so far, under 50%. Shotgun handoff to Samuels. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Black 80! Check Black 54! Black 54! It's just me and you! It's just me and you! Bad he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. Now it appears we have a stealer here slow to get up. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Let's go now. 90 Wolf. Check, check. Walk 54. Walk 54. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Get it. Now it's the backup Rudolph. And McDonald here over the middle. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Let's gaze our attention as the offense takes the field on Rashad Penny. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going, but we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series so those surface tablets come into play. Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. Now Rashad Penny, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Well, the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. 
Picked off by the rookie first rounder from Michigan, Devin Bush. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turned to block, find the spot, and now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. On first down, Connor. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. They held him in check in the first half, but that's his longest carry of the game right there. So would this be the definition of fresh legs since he didn't get much done in the first half? Now he has a great opportunity. He's taking full advantage of it. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. They'll run here with Connor, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss there. Through there, bringing up second down. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Second and goal from the six this time. Rudolph. To the end zone, but knocked away and incomplete. There in coverage to knock it away, Marquise Blair. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. They'll try to surge ahead with Connor. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. This situation in the fourth quarter, you go for it. But here, take the points. If you go for it here and don't get it, you and I are missing our plane, and we're going to the post-game press conference to hear him justify it. <laughs> because the next thing we'll see is the owner walking in, announcing a firing. There is no way he goes for it here. Get the field goal. It's the first half of the game. You've got time to make it up. A 23 yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good. And with that, they'll take a two-point lead here in quarter number two. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. <laughs> on the run, it's Penny. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Now it's Wilson. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. 
the beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time, make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Switzer on the return. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And our focus shifts here to Alfred Morris. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Now it's Rudolph. His throw incomplete. I think he's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll try and run for it with Connor. And it would appear he's going to be short of a first down as he stopped right around the 29. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Ooh. Here's Jordan Berry now. He's been terrific so far. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. A big kick. 50 yards that time with a return of four. And it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. Tyler Lockett trotting onto the field, getting set for this next drive. You would have to think they're going to make it more of a priority to get him the football. You're losing here in the second quarter, and he's been really quiet. I think all we have to do, and it's too bad we can't actually see the actual play sheet now from the coordinator, because he's looking down at that and saying, okay, do I put him in different spots? Do I try and isolate him? What routes do I run? You're exactly right. They've got to get the ball in his hands and get their offense kick-started. He does have the two catches, but pretty quiet so far. The drive starts with C.J. Prosize. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Looking to throw on second down. Wilson, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Hayward able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Well, it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in this second week of the regular season. On third down, Penny. 
It's a pickup of six, but it's not going to be enough. And the punt team's going to be summoned on fourth down. It's interesting going into this game, there was so much talk from both sides about who would control the line of scrimmage. I think we've seen who has it in this one so far. Well, they bottled him up. He's barely averaging over three yards a carry right now. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. This is taken at the 23. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Our first look at the NFL scoreboard comes from Green Bay. Early on, it's the Vikings in the driver's seat. That one tight to this point, and you'd have to imagine it'll stay tight throughout. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Rudolph. He gets this one to Johnson. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. It'll be a gain of 17 and a Pittsburgh first. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. This quarterback now, just two of five since coming on, but he does have a first down here. They go draw play. This is Samuels. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. From the 50, it's Rudolph. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. On first down, it's Samuels. And he'll be taken down at the 34. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. On second and seven, Rudolph. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And that will push the lead up to five. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. 
What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one. Go to the locker room. Start over. Okay, Brandon, we'll get you back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, it's time for a trip around the NFL following an eventful opening weekend. Let's see what's happening in week two. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentator, Brandon Gotten and Charles Davis. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Here's Russell Wilson and the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. And he's looking to take much better care of the football here in half two after three first half interceptions. We don't have to just look strictly at the numbers here. You know what else happens to a team when you turn it over three times like that? It erodes confidence in you. And it erodes confidence in the offense. And now you have the defensive guys looking over and saying, what is going on here? And instead of playing for the team, they're playing angry and mad at their teammates. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Well, that's the big drawback to this play. Even if somehow the quarterback pitches it, he's not immune to the big hit. In this case, he kept it and absorbed it anyway. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Walk tight, walk tight. Tight end rope, tight end rope. We got three, we got three, fellas, we got three. Wilson operating from the gun. This complete to Lockett. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. From the gun, Wilson. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Wilson now just 8 of 16 thus far, 50%, but it's first and 10. Here's Penny on the counter, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Second and 15 now. Wilson, it's caught by Garcon. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. He hits his running back, Procise. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. 
Continuing to steadily move the ball down the field. Not big play after big play, but these moderate gains getting them first downs. And you know what they add up to, right? If you continue that pace and you continue to move it downfield, they add up into six points. That's exactly what you're looking for. Wilson going to lead his guys up first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. On first down, pro size. And an alley to run. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It's a gain of 12, first down Seahawks. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive. And here's one out of the running game. So the pass. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And it'll be second and 12. Make it now three tackles for a loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing, but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now, making some big-time plays, getting into the offense's backfield and spilling everything. Second and 12, Wilson. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. They go play action now, Wilson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. DK Metcalf, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the Seahawks are going to retake the lead. Pete Carroll in that familiar hands-on knees pose. His guys will go for two here. Throwing is Wilson. Rush coming, and he's taken down. And in the third quarter here, they were trying to push that to a three-point game, but instead it'll stay at one. And I'm a big proponent of not chasing points or going for two too early. But in this case, I understand why. You know, if you kick an extra point, you're just up two, yeah. right? So a field goal still puts the other team ahead. So you go for two here and protect the field goal lead. They didn't get it done, though. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after him early and try and create a big play. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. They may have the edge on the scoreboard, but that hasn't made them pass it, has it? I mean, they've, they dialed up a pretty good run blitz there. And, and, and Brandon, you know that all blitzes aren't just designed to get to the quarterback and the passer. Sometimes you're just trying to take away every gap, every hole that might be created in a running game. And they did it to perfection and caused a fumble there. Took away the gaps, took away the holes, took away the football. So here are the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. 
They were winners last week against Cincinnati, and right now they are in the driver's seat in this ball game as well. So they need to determine if that knee review. was down before the ball was coughed up. And they also wanted to make sure that the ball was possessed as they were going through, that the ball wasn't working its way free before the knee hit the ground. Get a first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. at the 45 already. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Here's Samuels. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Big Al Woods there to make the tackle. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second and 15 now, Rudolph over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. It'll be a pickup of 15 as that'll lead to third down. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. On third down, it's Connor. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Russell Wilson now gears up to lead the offense again. He is looking to help his team build their lead after trailing at halftime. They've got to like the spot they're in right now. They have to love it, but as you and I both know, cliche alert coming here. You're only as good as your last possession, but I think that they like, as you said, the spot they're in and how confidently they're playing at this point. Uh, but again, just a one possession lead, looking to expand that now. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Penny. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. 
He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Second and nine now from the 21. From the shotgun, Wilson. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Now it's Wilson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. Pulled in at the 24. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. The drive will start with Connor, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Out of the gun, Rudolph. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. Here's Jordan Berry now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. A big kick that time, 52 yards. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Penny, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. Second and 11 now. Wilson, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
Stephon Tillett able to shake free and get home for the sack. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you're doing a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. And able to find Garcon. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A very solid gain of 27. Nice catch right there. Brings to mind the sentence, when in doubt, find your veterans. He used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. Just remember this, when he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. So from the 36 now, first and 10. The shotgun handoff to Prosize. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the 39, Wilson. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. That would have been a great catch. To hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, it's Wilson. And that will be incomplete. Throwing the football, he's not as sharp as he was last week when he was over 70%. Right now, he's under 50%. Well, that comes from extra game film, extra time. You know those guys watched him all week, saw how precise he was, and constructed a defense to try and chip away at that. And thus far, they've been successful. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He'll return it from the six. Come on, now. let's go! And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find right, one ready? of those special Six, plays three, from one of your better players, and maybe try First and hit down, something down. big and get things going in the excitement area. <laughs> they begin on the ground here with Connor, and he'll get this one up to about his 14. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and nine, Rudolph. Over the middle, it's complete. And he's gonna get this one across the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of 17 and a Pittsburgh first. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Five. On first and 10 is counter, and the reinforcements come in as they're gonna stop him behind the line. 
Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. He stayed afloat for a second there after the first wave of contact, but it, he, that was going nowhere. Yeah, what did he tell us in pregame? I just don't want to get my feet stopped initially when I'm trying to make a run. That's exactly what happened there. Unfortunately, as you noted, got away a little bit from the first one, but the wave swarmed him under. Let's go now. 18 Gator, 56. On second and 12, Rudolph got an open man. It's Washington. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. A couple of first downs has the football position at the 43 as they come up first and 10. They'll run here with Counter. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. If you're going to take a shot down, feel second and one is a perfect time to do it. If you're going to be in heavy run defense, you should have good windows to throw it downfield. And it looked like there was something there right after the snap, but the defense able to recover. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with counter. They end up getting stuffed twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drop? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a game of three. Javon Hargrave there on the stop. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Now second and seven from the 23. Wilson now off the bootleg. Pressure comes and Wilson's going to go down. The sack by T.J. Watt, or as his mother Connie calls him, Trent Jordan Watt. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. To throw is Wilson. From the gun, he'll throw. He gets this one to Garcon. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. In fact, right on the 30. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. And 
And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. From the 38, Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. Four yards the pick up, first down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Wilson turns and gives the pro size. It was Mike Hilton up to make the tackle. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Wilson's throw caught by Metcalf. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 39. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. They get 17 on that one, move the chains, first down Seahawks. I guess he was saving his best for last, so to speak. Longest run of the day coming here in the fourth quarter right there. And that type of run makes for a better night for him and his teammates, doesn't it? To be able to produce this late in the game can lead to some big smiles and satisfaction in the locker room after this one's over. first down and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage no gain on the play there second down run blitz there defensively something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter I think we'll see a lot of it and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz pass blitz you're just trying to get to the quarterback you're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground in a run blitz you're actually trying to cover up gaps trying to and he will score! Touchdown, Seattle! Make it a hat trick for Russell Wilson. Three touchdown passes now. And the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? Look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. Now Myers for the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. A 10-play drive that time. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. 
Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler, rather more complex, in order to try and fashion together a drive. On first down, Rudolph. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bobby Wagner, the former second rounder out of Utah State with a sack. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Here's Rudolph. And yes, complete to the tight end, McDonald. And all the way down to the 40-yard line. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Well, he gets attended to, we'll step aside. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. From the gun, here's Rudolph. Complete to Washington. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A little over 20 yards there, and in two plays, they've now moved the ball over 60 yards. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. On the carry, it's Samuels. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Shotgun snap for Rudolph. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Here we go on fourth, Rudolph. Oh, he's trying for Smith Schuster, but it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Bobby Wagner. The 40, past the 20. 
And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. A little bit of a backbreaker right there. You're down close, one score game, trying to push the ball down the field and score, and you throw a pick six. And sometimes you take a little bit of a gamble when you're making your throws, right? Sometimes you press it a little bit more than maybe you wanted to because you want that score so badly. In this case, it cost them. The extra point now coming from Myers. And the lead is up to 15 now. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Fielded about a yard deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And following the pick six. And they have decent field position in throwing that pick six. We'll see how they attack this drive. And I think all you say to your guy is, listen, let's just take care of the football a little bit better. Make some better decisions on this drive, and they'll probably help him a little bit with maybe some really high percentage on, throws early to let him get settled back yeah, in. But they told him, they told us, they've got confidence. That, that's not a problem. Yeah, not a problem at all. They just want to make sure they get things settled down a little bit for their offense and give their defense a little bit of a chance to rest. A pretty good looking run there on first down. That'll go for nine yards, just short of the line to gain. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and a yard at the 33 yard line. A little bit of a chance to rest. A pretty good looking run there on first down. The last run That's got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Now Rudolph. Open man here is Gentry. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. They'll run on first down. Samuels, and the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Some runs are blocked so well. You almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Ready, ready. On second and a couple, Rudolph. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. The Steelers able to pick up 18 yards there. It's so important to tackle well against these guys. But you and I both know that's easier said than done when the guy you're trying to tackle looks like this guy. And it's usually going to take more than one man to get him down, and it did right there. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Just like that. They'll run with Samuels, and he's going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing there for him. Second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is well over 
300 pounds. He's a big man. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 17-yard line. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. down Samuels and nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line he'll get back only to the line of scrimmage early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position we know the securing the point of attack especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day has got to be priority one Throwing on second down, Rudolph. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. That was the eighth play of the drive, so a somewhat fitting pickup of eight yards. Brandon, they didn't get everything they wanted out of that play, but the tight end did. <laughs> and I don't mean it in a positive way. Great job of him holding on after absorbing that big hit. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Now it's Rudolph. This is caught. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Nick Vanette, his first touchdown of the new season. As they're now just an extra point away from getting back within one score. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. And now in a nine-point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. And it's good, so that will get them back within one score. That time, a nine-play drive. And it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. well now to kick it away after the touchdown that'll be taken in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line the Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field they have the lead obviously late in the game I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Hayward giving him once again his third sack of the afternoon. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Wilson and the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. It's caught by Garcon. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 
33 yards that time. That was a real nice job right there, working the middle of the field, working against those safeties. And you know, partner, if you get your hips turned the wrong way, big plays can result. And a big play resulted right there. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Wilson leaves this one with Penny. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Operating from the gun, Wilson. Open man is Metcalf, he's got it. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way and worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and 10. Wilson defers to Penny here on the draw. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game against them, but tally that one on the side of the defense. Do you think maybe, possibly, it could be a little bit of a changer for them? Maybe not a game changer, but a little bit of a momentum one that maybe they can string together some pretty good plays and slow them down. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Here's Wilson to throw. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. Brandon looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. On third down, Wilson. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's going to be stopped well short of what he needed as the tackle is made at the 18-yard line. One hallmark of good defenses it's understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will bump the lead up to 11. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, bled a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Mason Rudolph leading this offense. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about a yard deep. 
and he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Mason Rudolph leading this offense. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about as a quarterback's not having much action where he's getting away from the line of scrimmage. He's catching the football, making a little head fake, and then handing it off. You should be able to read it as they did there. Looking to throw on second down. Rudolph, Washington's got it. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. This home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? They finally got one. Yes, they did. They'll run again with Samuels on first down. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On second and a yard. Rudolph. This one complete right side to McDonald. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact. And as a result, unable to hold on to the football. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Rudolph looking to throw it. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They're going to run. Here's Connor. And he is not going anywhere. They stop him for no gain. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back in outstanding field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. Penny, a first down carry. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Oh, Wilson going to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Wilson gives to Procise on the delay. And he's got this down to the 35. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. And yeah, they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Penny. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next.
Now Rashad Penny. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. One final kneel down here as it comes inside the 40-second mark, and that should be enough to put this one on ice. Well, Brandon, they're getting to 2-0, and, oh, and this time they're able to take a knee at the end and secure the victory. Preseason, coach said their goal. They obviously want to win everything. He said, I think we can get off to a 3-0 and oh start. Well, here they are looking at 2-0 and oh right now. So the victory here for Seattle, and they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put the ball they on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better.